Okay, so welcome back to this next video on the growth factor receptor and the uh, MAPK ERK pathway. Okay, uh, so so far what has happened is that the growth factor, which we are um, keeping nice and general and just calling growth factor, but if you want a specific example, you could think of epidermal growth factor. Uh, it's bound to the growth factor receptor, which we're again we're keeping nice and general, but you could think of it as the epidermal growth factor receptor. And uh, that causes the um, growth factor receptor to change conformation and basically they dimerize together. So they find a partner, another activated growth factor receptor. They dimerize together and then they phosphorylate each other's tyrosine residues uh, and in a process known as autophosphorylation. Now, when you've got phosphorylated tyrosine residues, what can come and associate is this growth factor receptor binding protein 2. Okay, so next step along is another protein is going to come and now bind to the growth factor receptor binding protein 2 once the growth factor receptor binding protein 2 has bound to the growth factor receptor. And this protein is known as SOS or SOS. Okay, so this protein binds to the growth factor receptor binding protein 2 once um, the growth factor receptor binding protein 2 has bound to its um, growth factor receptor. Okay, now what does SOS do? Well, SOS is basically an enzyme which is going to catalyze a G protein reaction. So it's going to catalyze the activation of a G protein. Now, um, the most famous G proteins are heterotrimeric G proteins, but the G protein we're going to study in this video is not a heterotrimeric G protein, it's a monomeric G protein. And the G protein we're going to look at is basically a G protein known as a RAS protein, R-A-S. Okay, so this is a G protein, which means that it binds uh, guanylate nucleotides. So it binds basically GDP. And when it's bound to GDP, it's inactive, basically. But what this enzyme SOS does is when it's bound to growth factor receptor binding protein 2, it's going to convert uh, RAS GTP, uh, GDP into RAS GTP. So what's going to happen is... Um, where should I draw this? Um, okay, we'll draw it happening, like, here. So RAS GTP is going to be, GDP rather, is going to be converted into RAS GTP by this enzyme SOS. Okay, and this reaction is not just a phosphorylation reaction. You might be tempted to think that maybe it just adds a, uh, a third phosphate group onto GDP. It doesn't. It completely takes off the GDP and binds instead GTP from the cytoplasm in, that, in its place. Okay, so you now have this molecule, RAS GTP, and now what we'll see is what does RAS GTP do. So this is the start of our signaling cascade, basically. So, so far, the binding of the growth factor to the growth factor receptor has caused RAS GTP to be converted into RAS GTP. Okay, and now what we're going to see is what happens next. So what does RAS GTP do? So, RAS GTP then. And let's say we've got our RAS GTP here. Well, basically, what it goes and does is it activates an enzyme. And it activates an enzyme known as RAF, a RAF kinase enzyme. Okay, so it's going to go off here, and it's going to bind to another enzyme down here. So here is it bound to an enzyme, which is a kinase enzyme. And this enzyme is known as a RAF kinase. Okay, so here is our RAS GTP. Here, so here's our GTP, here's our RAS, and this molecule of RAS GTP has bound to this enzyme RAF. Okay, so RAF basically is a kinase enzyme, so it adds phosphate groups onto uh, other proteins. Okay, and uh, basically, uh, it, before the RAS GTP bounds to it, it was inactive. But when the, um, the RAS GTP binds to our RAF kinase, it's going to activate that RAF kinase. So this is now an active RAS kinase. Okay. Oh, no, sorry, RAF kinase. RAF kinase. So it's now active. And what it's going to do is it's going to add phosphate groups onto other proteins. So what it now does 
is it adds a phosphate group onto another kinase enzyme. And this is where this just gets to the point where it's molecule hits molecule hits molecule hits molecule. But we'll go for it. And it's not too difficult at all. The most complicated thing is that um, there are absolutely loads of names for the same protein. And this does get quite, um, quite ridiculous, but we'll, we'll see. We'll cope with it. So basically, it's going to go to another kinase enzyme. So here's another kinase enzyme. And it's going to phosphorylate this other kinase enzyme. And when it phosphorylates this other kinase enzyme, that enzyme goes from being in an inactive state to being in an active state. So basically, the job of RAF kinase is to activate another kinase. So which kinase is this, basically? So this is a kinase that has a whole bunch of names. So it's known as MEC is one of its names. It's also known as MAPKK, or you might see it also referred to as MAP2K. All of those names mean the same thing. Now, what does this stand for? This stands for Mitogen Activated Protein Kinase Kinase. Okay, and you'll see why it's a protein kinase kinase. So, Mitogen Activated Protein Kinase Kinase. Okay, so protein kinase kinase. So it's a kinase of a kinase. And sometimes people who are really silly call RAF kinase the mitogen activated protein kinase 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 because it's the kinase that's activating the mitogen activated protein kinase kinase. So sometimes you may well see this written as MAP. K, K, K. Actually, I don't know if people would use that because of the three Ks like that. But occasionally you do see it referred to as the mitogen activated protein kinase kinase kinase. Activated protein kinase kinase kinase. And now that I've started this, I have to finish it. Kinase kinase kinase. Okay, right. So if you ever do see that name, uh, you know you don't know not to be confused. It means RAF kinase. Right. Okay, maybe people instead denote that as MAP3K. I don't think people would um, denote it like that. Okay, um, so um, now that we've activated this MEC, MEC is the name I will actually use for this protein because it's the simplest. M-E-K. Okay, now that you've activated this MEC protein, which is another kinase, it's going to phosphorylate another kinase enzyme. So there's another kinase enzyme down here, which is going to be activated by phosphorylation, and it's going to be phosphorylated by this enzyme MEC, basically. So MEC is going to perform the phosphorylation of this next kinase enzyme here. Okay, so what's the name of this silly enzyme? Well, hopefully this now makes sense. This one was the mitogen activated protein kinase kinase. So, what's this one going to be? This one is going to be the mitogen activated protein kinase, or the MAP kinase. So, this is the main one that the pathway is named after. So, mitogen activated protein kinase. Okay, now there is still a bit more confusion that I've um, got to tell you about. Mitogen activated protein kinase is uh, one name for this protein, but there is another name for it. In fact, there's two more names for it. One of them has the same acronym, which is doubly confusing, but it can also stand for, MAPK can also stand for microtubule associated protein kinase. And this is the same protein. So microtubule associated protein kinase. I don't know whether the people who came up with whichever one of these names came later um, tried to come up with its name so that it had the same acronym, basically. I think that probably must have been what happened. I don't. I think prob may, potentially microtubule associated protein kinase might have come first and then mitogen activated protein kinase second, but I don't know that. Um, Okay, and then the confusing thing is it's got another name, which is ERK, ERK. If you ever see ERK, what that stands for is extracellular signal-related kinase. Uh, sorry, extracellular signal-regulated, not related. Signal-regulated. 
regulated kinase. So a kinase that's regulated by extracellular signals, which is exactly what it is regulated by. It's regulated by uh, growth factor signals. Okay, right. So there's the uh, final name for this silly enzyme here. All of those three names all refer to this same protein that is being activated by phosphorylation by uh, the MEC enzyme. Okay, right. So, now what we need to do is discuss what this mitogen-activated protein kinase actually does. Well, there's two things that it does, and that are both very important. Um, it actually does many, many things. There's two things that I'm going to tell you about what it does. One of them is that it's going to phosphorylate a really important transcription factor. So I'll draw it converting this transcription factor from a non-phosphorylated state to a phosphorylated state. Okay, so here's the phosphate group it's added on. And basically, this is the transcription factor known as C-MIC. MIC is one of these incredibly important transcription factors and one that has got a huge amount of research going into it because it's often known as the um, cell's most powerful mitogen. Basically, if C-MIC goes up, the cell will divide. Um, it's not quite as black and white as that, but it is a very powerful um, transcription factor that's going to promote uh, cell division. Okay, so we'll come back to CMIC after we've looked at the other thing that MAPK does, because the other pathway that the mitogen-activated protein kinase activates also leads to the activation of transcription factors, which are going to do pretty much the same thing as CMIC, so we can reconverge the two pathways afterwards. OK, 